All right, it's time to pull your Instant Pot either out of the box or out of your pantry because it is time to learn how to use it correctly. So I've made a how to use an Instant Pot before, but it is now three years old and the Instant Pot has updated quite a bit. So I have two here with me right now. So this one is the Instant Pot Duo. And if you don't know what kind you have, just if you come over here, you will see right there, it says the title of every Instant Pot. And then this one is the Instant Pot Duo Crisp Air Fryer. It actually comes with an air fryer lid, but you can use it as a normal Instant Pot too. So I chose these two Instant Pots because the lids are a little bit different, the functions are a little bit different, and we're gonna talk about all of it. First, we're gonna talk about the Duo lid. Now this is an older version of the Duo, so that means it has a little knob. Most newer versions of the Duo don't have this knob. If you have this knob that moves, it's always going to be a little bit loose. That's okay. And you want to make sure right before you cook anything, it's always on ceiling, not venting. This is venting. This is ceiling. Okay, so this is a little bit newer version and it just has a button so it doesn't turn at all. So you can just put your lid on and just leave it as it is. So every Instant Pot also has one of these silver little rings. When your Instant Pot has come to pressure, this little ring will pop up. Then when you release the pressure, then this little guy will go back down. So that's a good way to know if it's pressurized or if it's not pressurized. And this pot has it too. Now we're gonna open up the Instant Pot. Every Instant Pot has a ceiling ring. Now this is very important that this ring is in place and it's not off just a little bit. If it's off a little bit, guess what? Your Instant Pot is not gonna pressurize. So you wanna make sure before you cook anything, your ceiling ring is in place. It will fit a little loose around the main ring. Now inside of your pot, you just wanna make sure that there is never anything in the bottom of this. So your pot will rest safely and dry in there. We don't wanna cause any problems. Then also with your pot, each pot has a spot where they hit their max fill line. I would never suggest filling up your Instant Pot all the way to here, so I would go about three-fourths of the way full. Now on the Instant Pot Duo Crisp, it also has a max line. It says PC Max and then two-thirds, so that is that is your max line. Now I'm guessing the majority of you have the Instant Pot Duo. That's usually the cheapest one, and to be honest, it's actually my favorite. Now I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I don't really use the soup, the meat, the beans, the poultry, the rice, the multigrain, the porridge, or the steam very often at all. The only buttons I really use is pressure cook, and then I also use the plus and minus button because that changes my time, and then I will make, when I make yogurt, I will use the yogurt button. Other than that, I just use pressure cook. Now the reason why is because those other functions, they just set a timer. That's it. They don't set the pressure, they don't set other things. So I want to manually set my own timer. Like for rice, I think it's set for 11 minutes when really rice only takes about seven minutes to cook. And the other button I use, of course, is the saute button. I use that quite often. Now on this one, this one is a little bit different because it's also an air fryer. So I for sure use pressure cook and then I set my time. I love using the saute button. The slow cooker button on all Instant Pots, I would never suggest using. It is way slower than a normal slow cooker and it just doesn't cook things all the way through very well. When I'm using my air fryer on this, I will use air fry and roast and broil. Now the one thing about this Instant Pot that's a little bit different is that after you set the timer, you have to push start. So if your Instant Pot has a start, most likely you're gonna have to push it before your machine will start working. Now the easiest way to figure out how to use your Instant Pot is to actually cook something in it. So I'm gonna show you how I cook rice in my Instant Pot. Now before I start, I always check underneath, make sure nothing is in there. I have half a cup of rice that I'm just gonna pour into the bottom. Now for every cup of rice, you need one and a fourth cup of liquid. So I had half a cup of rice, so I'm gonna add half a cup plus a little bit more. And then, yep, I just use my fingers. You just wanna make sure all the rice is touching the water. Now this is the duo, so you're gonna put the lid on. So you'll hear a little jingle when you put it on, and when you turn it, you'll hear a jingle. That's a good sign, that means you're doing it right. Now this little knob, we're gonna go to ceiling, not venting, just cause this one has a knob. Then I'm not gonna push rice, cause remember that's just a setting, so we're gonna go to pressure cook, and then I like to move my timer, it's gonna be seven minutes. Now with this Instant Pot, once you set the timer, you can just walk away, and you're gonna hear a little sound any second. There we go. Once you hear that beep, that means you're good to go. So this is the Duo Crisp. We're gonna put half a cup of rice again. Same thing, so half a cup of water plus a little bit more. Make sure all the rice is covered with the water. So you're gonna put the lid on. You hear a little noise, that means it's good. 
You're gonna turn it, hear another noise, that means you're doing good. So you don't have to do anything with this knob, you just have to set the lid on if your top looks like this. Now with all the Instant Pots, they're all gonna cook about the same, so we're gonna push pressure cook. <laughs> and hear Harper in the background, she's just chatty today. And this one we're gonna go all the way down to seven minutes. Okay, once you hit seven minutes here with this Instant Pot, we just need to push the start button. Now once it comes to pressure, it will start counting down. So we started at seven minutes, right? So then it will start counting down. This one took about, ooh, four minutes to come to pressure. If your Instant Pot is really full, sometimes it can take 15 to 20 minutes to pressurize. Okay, this one was just about a minute or two behind it. So they, even though this one is an eight quart, and this one is a six quart. They are really close in cooking time. Okay, once the timer is done on this Instant Pot, an L will appear, and then this will start counting up. So whenever you see the L on your duo and the number, so say it's like 12 or seven or six, that means it's already done cooking about six minutes ago. So when your Instant Pot is done cooking, you have two options. You can let it sit here. That's called natural release. That means it's going to sit here for as long as you want it to. As soon as it's done cooking, it will go to something called keep warm. So you can leave it on keep warm or you can do a quick release. And that's when you take this little knob and you turn it to venting or if you have a button, you're gonna push the button. It'll, it just both will let all the steam out. So we're gonna do a quick release here so you can kind of see it. So we're gonna go from sealing to venting. All right, once all the pressure is out, you can carefully open the lid. Now do realize this is gonna be hot as you open the lid, so you wanna make sure you're kind of out of the way of it. And just like that, you have perfect sticky rice. All cooked through in literally a matter of minutes and I didn't have to watch anything. Ah, just perfect. Okay, just like the other Instant Pot, this one shows an L and it's starting to count up. So it's been done cooking for about a minute. So we're gonna go up here and we're gonna push the little button to let all the pressure out. If you see that little pin, it's still up because it's all the pressure still in it. So we're gonna push the button. Okay, if you can see that little pin just dropped, so that means all the pressure's out and we're gonna carefully open our lid. There we go. And open it up. Yes, all the rice is done. And this one has perfect sticky rice too. Now I think one of the biggest questions that I get asked is, how do I know the cooking time? How do I know how long it needs to be in there? And so we actually have a free Instant Pot cheat sheet. Now if you want that, I'll put a link down below for you. It's totally free and it will give you the times for all the meats of what I cook them for. Now if you want some Instant Pot recipes that are super simple, I have plenty for you. You can find my most favorite ones just right up there. All right everyone, thank you so much for cooking with me. We'll see you next time. Bye.